and welcome to WildernessTV.com. This week we're going wild, really wild, in a very secluded reservoir up in the Black Mountains in Wales with a very good friend of mine, Ed. Now, Ed spotted this reservoir a few weeks ago when he was up here mountaineering. Now, we try and do a bit of research about where we're going to fish, but this place is so remote, we just can't find any information out. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and put into practice some of the things that Martin and Tony taught us about fishing lakes like Chew Valley and Blagdon. Our journey up through the Grinny Bar Valley to the reservoir is stunning. The wildlife and vistas make for a most impressive drive. The dam is 156 feet tall and lies 1,790 feet above sea level and has a capacity of over 2 million gallons. Construction of the dam started in 1908, but construction issues and the outbreak of the First World War delayed completion until February 1928. It then took 10 months for the reservoir to fill. The dam was constructed to serve both the collieries in the south and also combat the problem of severe sickness that had blighted the area due to poor sanitation. That was a nice trek up there this morning. Isn't that good? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, absolutely the, stunning. That's the blood pumping. Yeah. So tell us how you found out about this lake. Well, I just I came up for a walk. I fancied climbing a mountain a couple of weeks ago and I uh, had a look on the map and picked the highest one in the Black Mountains. Uh, up I came and I, I didn't know there was a reservoir here, but here we are. Well, we, we think it might be the highest, one of the highest reservoirs to fish in, in South Wales anyway, yeah. Uh, 1,800 feet up. Fantastic. So what do you reckon of our chances? What do you think the conditions are like? Well, it's a bit windy, as you'd expect up there. So I think we're going to be limited to one bank, uh, to start with anyway. And it looks pretty deep, so I think we're going to need to get some, some, um, some flies, wet flies down low, I think. Maybe an intermediate line or a sinking line, possibly. Isn't it? Yeah, I've seen a few little fry moving around, which is which is always a good sign. If there are any bigger brownies in there, they like the, the, the smaller fish. Uh, there's a bit of weed. And um, other than that, no sign of fish, big fish yet. OK, so what, should we give it a go here for half an hour or so? I think this looks nice and sharp to start with. Get our casting arms warmed up and see if we can find something. The advantage of fly fishing with a buddy is that you can try different types of flies and methods of fishing. So I'm experimenting a little bit. I've got that Montana down on the point, which is it's, it's quite weighty, so that should take us out. And I'm trying to decide what to go for on my dropper. Um, and I'm going to go for a dull back. Today, I'm fishing with an Orvis six weight clear water rod and reel and floating line. It's not long before Ed hooks into his first Black Mountain brown trout, and it's a stonker. Well, it was, I was just about to lift off the car, so it was really close in. So not deep, no, close to the edge. And he, 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 wait, he doesn't want to come up, he's only just come up to the surface once. Just missed one a couple of casts before that. I had one on and he just came off. So hopefully we should now find out what is what fly he's taken and yeah. have to make some decisions. What do you reckon? Yeah, well he's on the dropper, on the point. I've got I've got one on a point fly on a dropper, a buzzer on the dropper, and he's taken the point one, which 
I'd say it looks a bit like a cormorant type thing, but I don't know what it's called actually. Uh, we're going to spoon him to see what he's been eating, uh, see if we can find, because we've been fishing different flies and we've, we've had one now, but we want to see what they're actually eating. So I'm going to stick this down his tummy that way up. As far as it'll go, give it a twist, try and scoop out the contents. Oh, and he's been eating quite a few actually, so he's eating snails and quite a few of them as well. Possibly a little shrimp thing, no, I think that's all. It's all snails. So, what fly imitates a snail? That's the question. <laughs> that's truly wild. That's been born up here, lived up here, and I've just persuaded it to come and take my fly. It's, it's brilliant, there's nothing beats it. And he's gonna make a lovely supper. It's, it, you can't beat it. After a challenging morning's fishing, it's time for a break. Ed fries up some cracking local sausages. We've had a, an interesting morning. There's not been a lot of fish moving. Uh, we did knock into one lovely looking brown trout earlier on, but since then it's gone really quiet. About two minutes ago, we just saw a couple of fish rise. So there's a bit of cloud coming over. So hopefully we might catch one or two. I've stuck on my favorite fly of all time, Bob's Bits. Um, still not really short the biting on or anything yet. So put it out in a minute and we'll see what we can do. But now it's quick time for a bit of a break. Nice sausage sandwich and a cup of coffee before we start again. The sausage sarni seem to have done the trick and I hook into my first trout of the day. Okay, so it wasn't a monster and I return him back as quickly as possible, trying not to cause him any undue stress. about does he? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful brown trout. Wow, what a lot of fun. Does it get any better than this? So we trekked up a bit of a hill, got up to this reservoir. It's beautiful, there's no one here, haven't seen anyone all day and uh, I've been putting into practice some of the stuff that we've been taught by Tony and Martin on Chew Valley and Blagden. Uh, you know, scouted about, looked for fish. We haven't seen that many moving. Saw a couple of rises earlier, um, but we've all hooked into a fish now, and that was taken on a dry fly, probably just beneath the surface, I think. Not very big, but a lot of fun. Well, as you can see, the, uh, the light's fading fast here up in the Black Mountains and we've really got to make a move back to the car. It's about an hour's trek to go. 
Now we haven't bagged up today and caught a huge amount of fish, but what we have caught are some fantastic, beautiful specimens of wild brown trout. We took a bit of a gamble coming to a new location without any advice from anybody, and we've managed to catch a few fish. The reservoir here, in the middle of this beautiful mountainside, and we've had it all to ourselves. It's the wilderness. It's, we're on top of the mountains. It's, um, we have a climb up here. The fresh air is fantastic. We haven't seen another person all day, but we've seen some fish and we caught some fish, and it's, it's just so satisfying to know that you can, you can come up here in the middle of nowhere and catch some wild fish, and you, could, you can live on it. It's fantastic. Don't forget to like us on Facebook to keep up to date with the shows at www.facebook.com forward slash wilderness TV. And don't forget to visit our website at www.wildernesstv.com. Hopefully there's some information there that you might find useful. Let's have a look man. see how these uh, trout are doing. Oh, I think they're done actually. 